my country is a shrine of democracy. This is why four faces, great fathers reign over sacred Lakota land. These faces, Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln survey what they have taken, our black hills. And what is left for us? Barren reservations where we own nothing and we die slowly. My country, land of the free, is soaked with my blood. Standing on a hill by a country highway, there is a church the Indians go to. Its cemetery holds the bones of a man who died for his own. He died for his own. Teoate Juta, little girl, survived his war, all his warriors, young and strong, black hair whipping, rode into that settlement, new own. Brought fear to German homesteaders justified by their manifest destiny. New own burned a small victory, where white men fell, war would come, gouging that earth looking for Little Crow, naming him devil and deeming him heathen for killing white men and killing their women. Little Crow knew he'd take his people, hide hungry in his northern woods. Must have been the coldest season ever. The remnants of a warrior tribe cowering in their own wilderness, marking days until death. For another Dakota had been east, to see that great father, he said. Brother, I have seen their cities. They hold more people than live on all of our plains. They are inevitable. And slowly that starving season passed to a woodland spring. The earth took her time to bloom. She coaxed Little Crow out of the woods into the southern fields. There he might find food for his people. Just three days, he and his eldest spotted, picking raspberries in some white man's field. Come on, white man, raise your gun. Two shots in his back, father to son. Go, we not be run, I can die on my own. And watching his boy run for those trees, Little Crow breathed. He breathed one last time, the scent of raspberries and his oldest child. The piece I wrote at um, the end of last June called Meditation for the Fourth of July or America eats his young. Meet my uncle. His name's Sam. Sam's a bit retarded. He has a real limited vocabulary. He can only say three words. I want you. Sam's getting on in years. He's real skinny. This is quite remarkable since he has such a ravenous appetite. Yeah, he fits on a steady diet of kids. And though I seen him chase a lady, he much prefers the boys. He likes them young and tender, about the age of 17 to 21. USDA choice prime beef steak. He don't have no preference as to white meat or dark, legs or thighs. I even seen him go blue gourmet and scoop out the brains. I seen him munching out white kids from Waterbury. Seen him chawing down black kids from Roxbury, licking his chops over those yellow kids in Frisco, drooling over those brown kids from Sausalito. Feasting on those red kids from... Come to think of it, haven't seen old Sam digesting the red kids lately. Seems he gobbled them up long ago. He got so stuck on that red meat, he had to leave a few legs of thighs on his plate. Yeah, first time I ever seen him not finish his meal. But Sam got real weird with those red kids. You know, like any table-mattered man, he disposed of the bones. But then he was feeding them up again. Building fancy houses to put the bones in, putting them on display in pretty cases, waxing real proud and inviting all his friends over to look at his collection of bones. 
you can never know he was into such things. Sam while eating cream and cream, cream and, and, and the starch blue pants, his and his red and white pocket waistcoat, he trimmed go tea high top hat and all. No girl blood dribbling from his chin. But Sam's getting a daughter in his old age. I see him weeping over all the kids he's eating. Yeah, a real crocodile tears. Trying to make up for it by handing out rolls and dimes, but his kids just laughing at him, tossing the dimes back, pulling out his beard, stepping on his coattails, trying to get him committed. Sam's freaking out now, trying to wolf down whole islands in the Caribbean, washing it down with Gulf crew, reaching and grabbing, talking and arrangement, trying to round up the whole earth in a whole new world order, shooting his wives in the sky, planting colors on the moon, sending messages and chips to the aliens and other galaxies, trying to get the whole Milky Way in his side. Yeah, Sam's getting really weird in his old age. We're going to have to do something about this Sam. Thank you. One of the hardest things in growing up in the 60s was discovering that just about everything we were taught in schools was a lie. And this is no more evident than in American history, especially pertaining to Native Americans. Uh, about two years ago, I started writing pieces for the year coming up, 1992, which is going to be celebrating, I suppose, depending on your perspective, you know, 500 years of genocide in 500 years of prosperity. Although there are not much people here that can now testify to prosperity these days. Everybody here. I've gathered together a group of poets and musicians. Uh, we're going to do a piece called Where the Red Road Runs, an excerpt from it. And it deals with the native perspective on the last 500 years of history.